Hey everyone, this is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer. I want to welcome you back to my channel. Well, we're here at the end of March and I am getting started into galaxy season 2021. All through March, April, and May, I began to turn my telescope um, towards our nearest galactic neighbors. And for my first object this year, as I did last year and probably will do every other year, I focused on M81 and M82, Bode's Galaxy and the Cigar Galaxy. Now, the reason for that is not only do I love the shape and the beauty of these two galaxies, but they are also a little bit of nostalgia. These are the first two galaxies that I ever got to observe through a telescope, and I look forward every year to being able to capture a good picture of them. So I start off every galaxy season by tur turning my telescope towards M81 and M82. Stick around. I want to show you the results and I want to tell you a little bit more about these fascinating objects in the night, in the night sky. All right, as you can see, I am in Stellarium. I want to give you a little bit of um, help in just seeing where these two galaxies are located in the night sky. You'll notice here in Stellarium, I am facing towards the north. And if I zoom in a little bit here, you'll see Polaris. Here is Ursa Major, or the Big Dipper, as we call it here in the United States. Here is Ursa Minor, uh, the Little Dipper. And you can see Bode's Nat Galaxy is located right here. If I zoom in a little bit, you'll notice something. If I would have wanted to, I could have reframed this a little bit and actually captured three galaxies in the same uh, camera frame. The Garland Galaxy down here, Bode's Galaxy, and the Cigar Galaxy. What I decided to do instead was I wanted to have these galaxies framed up right in the center of my picture. So this is basically the orientation that I set up my equipment um, in order to, um, to image. You can see that here. Let me go ahead and open up uh, this picture uh, and let me drag it into the, my screen. This is the picture that I got. And you can see I, I kind of just missed the Garland Galaxy, which would be down in this region here, I guess. But let me tell you a little bit about these galaxies. First of all, You'll notice that um, they're pretty easy to find. They're also visible in the night sky pretty much throughout the year. These are circumpolar, which means basically M81 and M82 will just circle right around Polaris throughout the course of the year. And depending on where you're located and, and how visible your night sky is, you could pretty much view them throughout the entire year, just about anywhere in the northern hemisphere. Um, I find that if they drop down here late in the summer months, uh, they get down here behind some trees in my backyard, but I can, I can image them for a long time. And the nice thing about where they're at right now is if I just go up here oops, and uh, go to the date and time, you'll notice I have a long time that I can image these. I can really go till uh, 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. That's 4.30 in the morning. And they're still really uh, high enough that I could go ahead and, and image them if I wanted to. And so these are really, I would say in one sense, kind of low hanging fruit in the astrophotography world. But again, as I said in the introduction, these are two of my favorite uh, galaxies simply because I've got a long history with them. Okay. Let's go over to the picture that I took and let's take a look, talk a little bit more about these galaxies. Now, this is M81 right here. This is what's known as Bode's Galaxy. And they're named after this fella here, uh, who was the astronomer uh, Johann uh, Bode. He is the guy that discovered both of these galaxies. I'm going to leave that here for right now. You'll notice that Bode's Galaxy is a grand design spiral galaxy meaning that it has pretty prominent and well-defined spiral arms. You can see the spiral arms here and then also here. It's located about 12 million light years away. Again, that's one of those fascinating things about astronomy. That means the light 
from this galaxy has been traveling through time and space for 12 million years uh, to, re- to arrive at my telescope, okay? Which that always just amazes me. That's why we'd say that uh, um, astronomy is like a time machine. Uh, from uh, uh, the diameter of this galaxy is about 90,000 light years in diameter which would make it uh, roughly the size of our Milky Way. The Milky Way is approximately 105,000 light years in diameter. So this is just slightly smaller in cosmic terms than the Milky Way, but still dwarfed by something, let's say, like the Andromeda Galaxy, which is 220,000 light years in diameter. Now, this has a very active uh, galactic nucleus, uh, which is the home to uh, a super black hole down here in the very center of, the, of this very bright spot. They believe that down in the core of it, there is a, a super massive black hole. Now, again, I brought up this picture of Bode just to tell you a little bit about how this was discovered. Uh, it was discovered on December 31st, 1774. And what Bode was doing was Bode was looking for different nebula and star cluster that he was going to, star clusters that he was going to put into a catalog. And uh, he eventually discovered over 20 new galaxies and or um, nebulae and star clusters uh, from late 1774 through 1775. And on that night, December 31st, he looked into his telescope. And of course, he thought this was, these were nebulae. Uh, when he first observed them. He didn't know that they were separate galaxies. But later on, they were observed numerous times. Uh, Pierre Machan uh, made a discovery of M81 and M82 uh, later on. Uh, I believe that was in uh, 1779, I believe. And then uh, later on, Charles Messier included these two galaxies as part of his catalog of things that are not comets. Um, a couple of the important things that I'll notice, I'll go ahead and just zoom in here on uh, specifically on to M81 for a moment. And I want you to notice a couple of things. This has an incredibly dense core. Um, like I said a moment ago, at the center of this thing lies a black hole, a supermassive black hole that has approximately 60 to 70 million solar masses. Um, So this is a massive black hole, very large black hole. That would be about 15 times the size of the black hole at the center of our own galaxy. And it's also known for its beautiful spiral arms. I think that's one of the things that attracted to me this from the very first time that I saw it. First time I observed this, I think it was through about a... um, about a 12 or 14 inch Dobsonian telescope. And uh, and even with that, and I'm not a good visual observer at all, but even there, I could see the very clearly defined, very beautiful spiral arms of this galaxy. Okay, now let's go over to its companion. This is M82, also known as the Cigar Galaxy. And of course, you can see why uh, it has this very pronounced cigar shape to it. Now, this was also discovered by Johann Bode in 1774. It's located about the same distance as M81 from Earth. And what's interesting is it is gravitationally interacting with M81. Or, um, uh, so these two galaxies are actually interacting with one another gravitationally. And that's part of what is causing the intense starburst activity inside of this galaxy. Uh, According to some of the articles I read from professional astronomers, the the rate of new star formation in M82 is roughly 10 times higher than in um, a normal galaxy, say like our own galaxy. That means new stars are being made 10 times faster inside of this galaxy. And as a result, there is a high concentration of very young stars within the galaxy that create a very fierce galactic um, uh, super wind, you might think of it. And that's what's blowing out. You see this, this pink 
on here. There's other pictures, especially some of the Hubble pictures that really capture this a little bit better. But this, this pinkish area here is hydrogen and probably some other gases, but primarily hydrogen that is being expelled out of the galaxy. Um, and um, what's ended up happening is every year this galaxy is losing some of its fuel to build new stars. Um, and uh, so eventually it will run out. Eventually this, uh, this whole system will calm down and settle down. But uh, again, uh, looking at it, a couple things that I would point out, a couple of important features is, uh, first of all, we're looking at sort of an edge on side view of this galaxy. If we were looking at it, it's actually shaped somewhat like the um, its partner uh, M81. But what we're doing is we're looking on it on the side. So it kind of looks irregular. Uh, but um, Professional astronomers have observed that there are some spiral arms here, and that is actually a spiral galaxy. Um, again, I'll point out this red gas, these filaments that are coming out here, traveling at approximately 500 kilometers per second. And this is being caused by that wind that is blowing out from this particular galaxy. The other thing I would point out, just kind of an interesting fact about this galaxy, back in December 2013 through January 2014, there was actually a supernova that was captured um, and was observed and, and eventually imaged uh, that appeared in this particular galaxy. So that kind of makes it kind of interesting. Again, I've got a long history with these two galaxies. They're two of my favorite. I love to observe them and to image them every year. Um, I may actually, just in a way of improvement, just to give you an idea of how astrophotography is an ongoing thing, I, I think what I may do, I've shot these with my Orion ED80T, my ZW0183MC Pro camera, and the filter that I used was my um, Optolong L Pro, which is a really nice light pollution filter. I think what I might do is go back onto this very same um, uh, framing and put the um, L Extreme filter on. Now, that's a narrow band filter, and you usually wouldn't use narrow band to image galaxies. But what I would like to do is capture a little bit more data on this hydrogen right here. And I think maybe. I can be able to make that stand out a little bit more. Make, take uh, two or three hours of imaging with the L Pro Extreme or with the L Extreme, and then be able to put all of that data together. Put my color RGB picture together, and then overlay the uh, uh, hydrogen alpha from the L Extreme filter, and maybe be able to get these filaments a little bit better. I'm gonna give it a shot. Uh, we'll see how it turns out, but. Um, that's all I got for today. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something about it. And um, tonight I'm going to start working. I'm going to have a couple of clear nights. I think I'm going to work for a couple hours on trying to add that um, H alpha data. And then I'm going to go and try, because the moon's going to be fairly bright late tonight, I'm going to go try uh, a new nebula that I'll be talking about. I actually got that off of Chuck Ayub and uh, a nebula that I had never heard of before, which it's not new in the universe, but new to me. And uh, I'm going to give it a shot. So be sure, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe so that next week or the week after, you'll be able to see my, my next update. So thanks for tuning in today. I hope that you uh, enjoy these videos and that you learn something from them. Thanks a lot. Just a quick reminder, if you enjoyed this video, please help support me by clicking on thumbs up and share. Thank you.